Lesson 31, we're back at it with example five. So this time we're gonna sketch the graph of log base two of x plus three. The three is outside the grouping symbol, so this is gonna shift our graph from example three up three units. So graph, or I will say shifted three units up from the graph in example three. And then we'll get some key points. We'll state the domain range and asymptote. So let me go ahead and scale and label my axes. And let's start going after this. So I'll put my little separator here. All right, so for domain, always the best place to start. I don't have a fraction. I don't have a radical. I do have a logarithm. So I need x to be strictly greater than zero, which means my domain is from zero to infinity. And again, whatever value of x zeroes out your argument, that automatically becomes your vertical asymptote. Or another way of thinking of that is whatever numbers are in your domain will turn up as vertical asymptotes that you list off in your traits. All right, so let's go ahead. There is my vertical asymptote. All right, great. Now with that, I would like some key points. And I wanna be efficient with what X values I pick. So here we go. I have log base two, so I'm gonna pick powers of two. So I'm gonna put one in there, two, four, and eight because those are powers of two and those seem like good numbers to select. So if I plug one in, log base two of one is zero. Zero plus three is three. If I plug two in, log base two of two is one. One plus three is four. If I plug four in, log base two of four is two. Two plus three is five. If I plug eight in, log base two of three 8 is 3, 3 plus 3 is 6. All right, so there we go. Let's go ahead and plug these in. We've got 1, 3. I've got 2, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 4, 5. And then 8, 2, 4, 6. There we go. All right, I can see my logarithmic function. That's looking pretty good. All right, from there I can see all the way down to all the way up on my range. So I, I've, I've got my graph, right? I've got some key points on there. I've got the traits listed, but again, like always, I wanna extend further. And let's just try the rest of these. Let's see if we can find our x-intercept, our y-intercept, our end behavior, and did I have any holes? just so we can finish all of those traits off. All right, now your x-intercept is going to be a little bit more intricate, so I'm gonna save that until the end. All right, so I'm gonna come back to this one. For my y-intercept, I can't plug zero in, so I have no y-intercept here. For my end behavior, again, take note, negative infinity is not in my domain. I have no graph on the left end of the x-axis. So end behavior, again, it's not necessarily the ends of your graph, it's the end of the x-axis. So I have none on the left, and then I have right arrow up. And again, my argument, none of this has um, fractions with common factors in it, so I have no holes. All right, so let's go focus on the x-intercept, because again, that one's gonna be a little bit more wonky. So I'm gonna head down here, and I need to scooch this up so we have some space to see it. So let's talk about our x-intercept. If you want an x-intercept, you wanna let y equal zero. So I wanna let log base two of x plus three be equal to zero. Or another way of saying that is I would like log base two of x to be equal to negative three. If I transfer this into its equivalent exponential form, I start with my base, two, the logarithm is the exponent, and I use that circle equation and that's equal to x, well that's like saying x is equal 
to 1 over 2 cubed, which is 1 over 8. So that means my x-intercept is the ordered pair 1 8th comma 0. All right, and as I look at my graph, that's very conceivable that that ordered pair right there is 1 8th comma 0. So with that, let me scooch this back down so we get it all in view. All right, so I'm going to list my x-intercept as 1 8th comma 0. Okay, all right, we're going to keep on stretching, shifting, and, and, and reflecting. I'll see you in a bit. Bye.